similar to the multi-dock browser and control bar, the inspector can be docked or floated using the dock menu. It can be hidden or shown instantly by pressing I. Once floated, it can be dragged where it's most useful for you. It consists of four different views. Pro Channel, Track Properties, Clip Properties, and the Track Strip Inspector. The first three are all accessed via their own tabs, as you've just seen. And they all have shortcuts. They are Control I for the Pro Channel, Control plus Shift plus I for the Track Inspector, and Shift I for the Clips Inspector. Note that these are on off toggles. When they are all off, the track strip is visible. Unless you choose to lock it, it always follows the active track or bus, which makes performing various tasks on selected track or bus very quick. To lock or unlock the inspector to bus or track, click on the track or bus you want to lock or unlock from, and then in the inspector track or bus name area, left click and select or deselect lock the current track or bus option from the pop-up menu. By default, the Pro Channel is the first view we'll see. This is the producer version inline channel processing strip, consisting of a multi-mode EQ which is ever present, and various other processing modules that can be added or removed from the chain as required. It provides everything you need to get a great sound in a small footprint area that follows the in-focus track. Combine the low latency with no need to manage countless VST windows, and it really is a great feature. We'll look at it in greater detail later when we look at Sonos mixing tools in depth. Pressing Ctrl I will either hide the PC or bring it to the front depending on its current state. Let's click on the Pro Channel tab. As you see, that hides it, and we now see the Track Strip Inspector. The controls visible here will depend on the currently active track or bus. If it's an audio track, we'll see the currently selected track to the left and to the right the track's output, or if a send on the track is selected, the send bus. The audio track controls from top to bottom are duplicates of most of those found in the track view headers, plus a few more. We'll look at them in more detail when we look at working in the track view. The bus strip to the right is similar in that it duplicates most of the controls available in the bus headers and adds a few as well. If it's a MIDI track, we'll see the current selected MIDI track to the left and to the right, various settings and tools, including a patch browser and an arpeggiator. An instrument track shows the current track to the left and to the right, a dual tabbed view switched by clicking on the tabs at the bottom. There's an audio tab, which shows a downstream bus similar to the audio track view. And the MIDI tab shows the same settings and tools as the MIDI track view. If a bus currently has focus, then that is shown in the left hand strip and a downstream bus to the right. If the master bus or any other bus outputting to a main is the current bus, then the right hand strip displays that main. If it's a main output selected, and that is shown on the left hand strip and the right hand strip is blank. If you wish, you can narrow the track strip inspector by click dragging on one of the sides. And then if you select other tabs, it will automatically widen. It will narrow again when you close the tab. Let's widen it again and take a look at the other two tabs. The track inspector and clip inspector are similar in function. The track inspector is brought into focus by pressing Control Shift plus I or clicking on the track tab. From here, the track name can be changed, a description added, color changed, and audio snap render options set. Once again, remember, this will always follow the currently in focus track or bus. The clip inspector allows access to various clip properties and has additional tabs for groove clips audio snap, and clip effects. 
I'll be covering all of these in more detail later. The inspector also has a display menu that allows us to choose the modules that are on show, as well as an options menu for setting options for those modules. We'll be looking at these in more detail when we look at the console view in detail later. Let's take a brief look at the console view. Accessed by pressing Alt 2 or selecting it from the views menu, this contains all the controls we need to mix a project. It's docked in the multi-dock by default. Remember, we can show or hide it instantly by pressing D. And Shift D will maximize or restore it. At the top, we have another one of the view relevant menus, and we'll look at that in more detail when we start to use the view. The console view is where we see any tracks or buses we have in the project, but viewed as channel strips. They're laid out in a very similar manner to how they are in the track inspector view. The signal flow is from top to bottom of the strip, with a possible exception of the sends module that can be either pre or post fader. We'll look at those and the differences later. Audio tracks, MIDI tracks, instrument tracks, and simple instrument tracks can all be shown in the track strip section, and buses and main outs have their own strips. These strips can be hidden or shown as required using the console view menu. Note that these strips are arranged in modules, and similar to the widgets in the track view, these modules can be hidden or shown as required, allowing us to customize how the console view looks. For example, if we decide that we don't want to see any of the effects possibilities, we can hide the effects bin and the pro channel. We'll look at this view in more detail later when we cover mixing tools.